So kinds of methods. Generally, you can use uh, any of the following accounting methods. So obviously, you've got the cash-based method. So the cash-based method is usually easier to kind of do because, of course, we're going to recognize income when we uh, have receive income, money, cash. We're going to record the expenses when we spend money or cash. However, the cash-based system is also easy to manipulate, which is the reason why publicly traded companies and the regulatory authorities and rules governing them, such as generally accepted accounting principles, the SEC and so on, uh, use an accrual method and then try to regulate that kind of accrual method. So in other words, if we're on a cash-based method, that might be a nice, uh, a fairly easy method to, to use. But we also have to note that there probably are going to be some deviations that we need to make that are an accrual deviation because the tax code is going to require us to do it. And there are some instances where we might need to use an accrual based method just because of the nature of our business, which we'll talk more about uh, in future presentations. So, for example, if you are on a cash based system, if you are trying to manipulate your income to pay more or less taxes in the current year, you, you might try to say, hey, look, I'm going to try to collect more cash later, meaning having my customers not pay me this period, but rather pay me next period so that although I earned the money, I didn't get the cash until after December. Well, that's manipulating things. And you would think that's not the nature of what we really want to happen in a fair accounting system. We would rather have it in income when you earned it on the expense side. If you wanted to lower your income this year, your net income, you might try to pull in expenses by prepaying for things such as paying five years of rent in advance this year. The tax code will typically have limits and not allow you to do those kinds of things because now you're manipulating the cash based uh, system. So uh, in order to you know avoid taxes, right? So we'll talk more about that later and accrual method. The accrual method is typically the method that we think of from an accounting standpoint that publicly traded companies, for example, would use as the standard for most businesses in terms of proper reporting for kind of comparative purposes, comparing one period to the next. Although it can be a little bit more difficult to do the bookkeeping for an accrual method. So there are pros and cons for it. And it's a little bit more difficult for the IRS to try to audit an accrual method system because they can't just track when the cash was spent and we can't for every taxpayer have an auditing system as we do with publicly traded companies having a separate firm audit you know the, the every s small business right so that's why we have that's kind of the trade-offs between these two methods so special methods of accounting for certain items of income and expenses now note that you might have situations where basically you're kind of like on a cash based method for the revenue cycle and or maybe a cash based system method for uh, the expense cycle, but you have an accrual system for like the revenue cycle, for example. Uh, and and that might that might be, for example, like if you invoice people and you do work like an accountant, for example, or a law firm, then you have to invoice people. So your natural bookkeeping system then on the revenue side would be that you're going to you're going to record revenue when you invoice them before you get the cash, meaning your income statement's going to be recording income on an accrual based system. You're going to be recording income before you got the cash and then when you then you're going to collect on the accounts receivable. But on the expense side of things, you might be using uh, a cash based system because you're basically paying your expenses when they become due. Now note that there's a little bit of a nuance here because uh, on the expense side, you could call that an accrual system or a cash system. It just so happens that both system would would result in the same reporting of expenses, one reporting the expenses because that's when you did did when you when you paid for it cash basis and the other because that's when you consumed uh, the work. But the point I'm trying to get to here is that you could kind of think of yourself as a cash based or accrual based system by cycle or particular kind of accounting activity resulting in basically some kind of hybrid method. We also have, for example, 
some companies that have revenue recognition issues, such as construction companies, where they do projects for a long period of time. Normally, under a revenue recognition accrual concept, you don't recognize revenue until you finish the project. But if the project's going to be a five-year long project, you can argue that, hey, shouldn't we be recognizing revenue as we earn it along the way? which means you would be using some other kind of revenue recognition, like a percentage of completion uh, type of method. So you run into problems there that are special, possibly to certain types of industries. And then you have a combina combination method using elements of, or of two or more of the above methods. So note that even if you're on a cash based method, you're, you, you're still, the code is still gonna force you, the tax code, to be doing some accrual things. So you're going to be on a cash-based system, except when the tax code doesn't let you prepay something uh, and, and you're still going to have to record how the tax code tells you to record in that way, which might be more of an accrual method, or except when you buy property, plant, and equipment, because then you're going to have to do an accrual thing, putting it on the books as an asset, even though you uh, paid cash for it, for example. So... In that case, you might be on a cash-based method, but you still are doing accrual things according to the tax code, or you might be telling the IRS, hey, look, I'm doing some kind of combination between the two. And again, you wanna basically lay that out in the beginning so that, so that uh, you can be consistent with that going forward. As long as you're consistent, that's kind of the key from an accounting standpoint, because what the IRS is skeptical of will be that people are changing their methods in order to manipulate the cutoff periods and pay less taxes or at least uh, defer taxes in some way. So you must use the same accounting method to figure your taxable income and keep to your books, uh, income and keep to your books, meaning you should basically be doing your books in the same method as the tax return. If you're doing your taxes and you're using a different accounting method than you're using for your books, then the IRS would possibly assume that you're doing that because you're doing some kind of tax manipulation. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't have some changes that we are going to need to make in order to go from the, the bookkeeping method to the tax method, such as like if you use the, the mileage method to write off your car or the home office uh, or things like that. But in general, if you're using account, an, an accrual method on your bookkeeping, you would think that you would be using the accrual method as you report the Schedule C from your bookkeeping into the income statement form of the Schedule C on the tax return. If you're using a cash-based method, same. So also, you must use an accounting method that clearly shows uh, your income. Obviously, it needs to be accurate in terms of showing your income. Business and personal items. So you can account for business and personal items under different accounting methods. So for example, you can figure your business income under an accrual method, even if you use the cash method to figure your personal items. So you might be saying, hey, look, I've got a small business. 